What's up everybody, welcome back to the auditorium. Today I have a concrete beam shear design example for all of you. And we are given a shear demand of nine kips. Uh, and we're given some properties here, F prime C and F Y. Uh, this is just normal weight concrete, 3000 PSI, and the yield strength of the rebar is 60,000 PSI. First, let's jump over to the ACI so we know where they define shear strength. That would be right here on 22.5. This is one way shear strength. This is just a basically a simply supported beam. It's non pre-stressed or anything like that. Our total shear capacity for reinforced concrete is this equation here. And it is the total shear capacity is the summation of the shear capacity of your concrete and the shear capacity of your steel rebar, your, your stirrups, that is. Not the longitudinal rebar, that's, that's for your, uh, your bending capacity of your beam. Ultimately, no matter what type of situation you have, you need to find these two uh, capacities and combine them together. So it's no different for us here today. What I do next is solve for the capacity of the shear strength of the concrete alone, V sub C. That is just a couple pages further down here and it is with this equation here. If you're doing the simplified method, if you're doing the um, detailed method, as you can see right below here, there are some additional parameters that you run in order to determine the strength of your concrete um, shear capacity, but today we are just gonna stay up here. This is pretty typical um, of the equation that you use, but spoiler for all of you out there, depending on the date when you're watching this, the this is ACI 318.14. The new ACI 318.19, I think it is, um, they have changed this parameter right here. This equation is now gone and there are very, different things that you do here that will give you very different answers. So if you're using the new code, the 318.19, unfortunately this no longer applies. It's the same method that you're gonna see here today that you use, but this equation is different. It's very different. So check that out. Here we are. Uh, we have everything besides, I would say these two unknowns, your phi and your lambda. Well, phi, is equal to 0 0.75 for shear, and lambda is uh, dependent upon the type of concrete that you're using. We have normal weight, which is just regular, plain Jane, the normal stuff. So lambda is just 1.0. I said we're moving through the ACI today. Here we are, table 2121. This is all your strength reduction factors, phi, bang. It's got everything for every situation you could possibly have. We are just standard shear, 0 0.75. Gives you a little exceptions over here. Make sure you read into those when you're talking about earthquakes. Um, but besides that, that's all we need here. Let's go check out Lambda. Just like that, we find ourselves table 19242, modification factor, Lambda. And if we scroll down here, we will see normal weight concrete is just one. So there you have it. All right, let's keep moving. That gets us phi VC of 15.8 kips which is larger than VU. And you're like, okay, cool, done, see you later. Hey, peace out. Uh, auditorium's closed, I'm gonna go grab uh, some lunch. No, not quite. There are still additional requirements that you need to go through, including minimum steel checks and stuff like that to make sure that your design is adequate for the ACI. Because concrete, a big thing, I mean, all of the materials, a big thing is not just checking for strength. There's additional requirements um, that take a lot of additional things into account. So don't just see strength and call it a day, all right? Tip for the day. Well, next, let's do just that. Let's determine if we need to include minimum shear reinforcement, just regardless of the strength. And how do we do that? Well, if we first need to find VVC over two, that's just what we found above divided by two and gets you 7.9 kips. And you're like, well, what are we doing with that? Well, in ACI 9631, chapter nine is the beam section of the, uh, of the ACI, you have this whole section right here which talks about AV min requirements and some things that you can do in order to get out of providing AV min. AV min, for those of you who don't know, is just your minimum amount of shear reinforcement that needs to go into a beam. So, AV, right there, minimum area of shear reinforcement, AV min shall be provided in all regions where VU is greater than phi VC over two, or they write it as 0 0.5 phi VC. So that's your check, except for the cases in this table below, 
there you have it. And then it gives you some, some criteria down below here. But this really right here is what we're looking for. We have the strength of our concrete over two, 7.9 kips, which again, that also equals 0 0.5 fee VC to keep it in the same look as the ACI. I don't want to confuse anybody. So it's less than VU equal to nine. So we need a V min. If this was 10 or anything greater than nine, then we wouldn't need to provide any minimum steel and the concrete is adequate to resist the uh, shear forces and we'd be, we would be done. Well, what is AV min? How do we calculate that? AV min over S equals the following. The greater of two options, 0 0.75 square root F prime C, base width over FY, and 50 base width over FY. Now, a little note here, a little speedy fun fact as I was studying, if your F prime C is less than 4,444 PSI, then you will use this guy right here. Um, that's, that's the threshold, that's the cutoff of comparing the two is dependent upon the strength of your concrete. Make sure you're going through the process, you're checking both and you're taking the greater value and moving forward from there, but use this trick to solidify your knowledge of this step right here, okay? Now let's pump the brakes real quick because this entire thing is when uh, we are looking at shear demand only. If there are torsional loads, then uh, then it's different. All of that information in table 9633, we are non-pre-stressed, so we find ourselves right here. Um, if we were pre-stressed, then you, know, you have to start doing some of this additional checks to make sure you know where you fall, but there you have it. So using the little note that I gave above here, AV min over S equals 50 base width over um, the yield strength of your steel rebar, which gets you 0 0.01 inches squared. But you also have this S variable down here. And S, how I'm going to, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this and keep track of it in your head. Um, what I like to do is start off at one foot increments, which breaks down into 12 inches. So this S is actually 12 inches sitting here, which means once you get this value, we need to multiply by 12 inches because we need to bring it from the denominator over to this side of the, uh, to the other side of the equal sign, which then just isolates, if I go blue, AV min alone. And that will put it in a amount of steel per foot basis in terms of uh, accounting for it. That's how I like to do it. Let me know in the comments down below if you like to do it some way different, but that's just me. That ends up getting us AV min equal to 0.12 inches squared per foot. Well, let's try uh, number three stirrups at 12 inches on center. Rule of thumb, if it's a normal size beam, relatively try to make number threes and at most number fours work out. Now we're saying that bang, this is number threes. Well, a number three area steel equals 0 0.11 inches squared. And you're like, well, that's not enough. But remember, we have two legs. One stirrup equals two shear legs, which means you get to double the amount of steel that you have, because it's two times a bar per one stirrup. So AV 0 0.22 inches squared per foot, which is greater than AV min. Okay, awesome. We have enough steel, we met our minimum requirements, we're done, right? Not yet. We still have some additional requirements per the ACI to check, namely the spacing limitations of our shear reinforcement. So let's go check that out. We find ourselves in table 97622, maximum spacing of shear reinforcement, exactly what we are looking for. It's just difficult to find in the ACI. It's easy when I go straight to it, I know, but You'll get more familiar. You just need to keep that repetition going, going back into the code, searching for this stuff. It's there. Um, but it's dependent upon VS um, and how much strength from your shear reinforcement you have in your uh, total beam design. So if it's less than four square root F prime C, BWD, then it's one thing, and if it's greater than the four square root F prime, blah, 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 then it's another thing. 
Um, and then it just comes down to non-pre-stressed or pre-stressed. We are non-pre-stressed. So we need to find this first step. So what is VS? Well, there's a quick little trick here that I'm gonna show you right now. So let's head back. VS, question mark, what is it? We have the uh, amount of steel, but how much shear capacity does that steel add to our concrete beam? Well, VS equals AV FY D over S. We have all of these things, so let's plug in. So the next thing I'm gonna do here deviates a little bit from the ACI. It's totally the same thing, but it's just a process that I like to go through in my head um, is actually solve for phi V sub S. So that phi we know is 0 0.75. It's the same for steel as it is for your concrete because you're still finding shear capacity. And that means you need to plug in a phi on this side of the equation. So I'm gonna plug in 0 0.75 here as well, and I'll show you why I do this. So all of that gets us 13.2 kips. And one additional thing I'm going to remind us is that this part of the equation right here, your amount of shear reinforcement and the spacing of your shear reinforcement is all dependent on how you wanna keep things organized. Um, I gave the amount of shear reinforcement per foot in this sense, but if you didn't make that conversion back up top, if you kept it in like a per inch segment, then, you know, this would be a really small number and this would just be one inch kind of thing. So you can do different things. It's dependent on you. We know that phi V sub C is equal to two lambda square root of prime C base whip depth. And our threshold in the ACI is four lambda square root f prime c base width. This threshold determines if we have to go one way in the table or another way in the table, if we go above this number or below this number. And this, uh, if I go green here, piece of the equation is identical to this piece of the equation for finding the shear capacity of your concrete. So if we ignore all that, that just leaves us, if I go blue here, with these parts of both equations, which is just a variable, two and four. So by that logic, two phi VC equals four lambda square root F prime C base width depth, because it's just two times. So you can use, you don't need to solve this really. Um, you can save yourself a little time because we already solved for V VC, um, which is equal to 15.8, Kips, so that means two phi VC equals 31.6 kips, which equals four lambda square root F prime C base width depth. And we can compare that. So we see that two phi VC is greater than phi VS, which we calced above is equaling 13.2 kips. All right, so we are less than this value here. So let's head back to the table and check out what that means for our spacing maximums. So we fall under this one, come right into here. We are the lesser of D over two and 24 inches. All right, let's go use that. S max of AV equals D over two is 16 inches over two, which equals eight inches. It's the lesser of, so eight and 24, that means the maximum spacing of our shear reinforcement needs to be eight inches. We specified 12 inches in our first go around, so we actually need to reduce that spacing. So our final answer is going to be use number threes at eight inches on center for your shear reinforcement in your concrete beam for this example. Um, you could be saying, well, wait, if we reduced our spacing and we already had more steel than uh, AV minimum, couldn't we reduce our steel? Well, no, y yes, theoretically, but no, because there's, I don't think there's a bar smaller than a number three. Is there a bar smaller than a number three? I got, I got the, I got the paper one here. Um, no, there's no bar size smaller than a number three, and you can't get away with reducing your steel any further by increasing the spacing between them because the ACI has maximum spacing uh, requirements. So you're stuck at a number three as your smallest, and uh, you're forced to space it 
at a maximum of that max spacing. So we are really, even though the shear is low, um, the demand was still higher than one half of phi VC. So we were required to put in some minimum amount of shear reinforcement. And then we just maxed out the spacing that we were allowed between those stirrups um, per ACI requirements. So there you have it, there we are. We made it to the end. Like and subscribe, do all the things if you want to. Tell a friend, tell a colleague, uh, tell a practicing engineer, uh, your buddy in school, your dog, whatever you wanna do. Um, spread the word that we're learning a little something about structural engineering here. Sometimes I don't convey it across the best probably, but do let me know in the comments below if you were confused. And uh, without further ado, get out of the auditorium, go enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you all here sometime soon. Peace.